Okay. I'm going to read you something. I want to make sure you understand it, okay? Yeah. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, want to be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Okay. Would you sign here to show that I read that to you? All that's st stating is that um, I read you your, your uh, Miranda rights. Okay. Now, do you want to talk to me about this incident? About that incident, Mark? Mm -hmm. What do you want to know? Well, i got to know if you want to talk to me about it or not. Well, I can talk to you. It's not wrong. Okay, good. Would you sign here, please? We're going to go over again about that night, okay? Right. Um, you were working, is that correct? Yes, that was. And that was on Thursday? Yes. Do you think it was about the 16th? I think it was about the 16th, yes. Okay, so it was the 16th on a Thursday. Originally, you said on a Saturday. A actually, originally, you told me on Thursday. When I told you that Debbie had told me that it was on Saturday, you agreed. Were you yes. just agreeing at that time? Well, when my dad asked me when what day it was, I was half asleep. I didn't really give time to think. Okay. Because he had woken me up, so I just pretty much set a day just so he would leave me alone when I go back to sleep. Okay. Okay, so are we sure, sure it was Thursday now? Yes. Okay, tell me what, about. What I can do is I can get the schedule that I'll be working that week, okay. and I can see who I was working with. As I backtrack, I'll be able to tell you. Okay. Regardless of the day, that's the night Marcus Gallicky was there. Yes. Right? Okay. Tell me about your day that day. My day was I got up, I had gotten called or I got up, I was getting showered and I played games with time with him a little bit and around three fifteen I left to go take the Lawndale bus to work. Which is? Like ice cream. Like still ice cream over there in the road. Mm -hmm. And after that we had a very it was a very long, drawn out day and when I had gotten home he was sitting at my kitchen table. Okay. So let's back up. What what time did you leave work? It was about let's see Thursday. 9:45 when she told me to leave, mm -hmm. and then I was sitting on behind, uh, Lakes, or not Lakes, uh, the mall, waiting for the bus. Okay. For about 30 minutes. Okay. And, and what time do you think you got on the bus? About 10:15. 10:15. Long Longdale. Okay. And where did that bus take you? Took me down to you know where Big Lots is at, or there by some, or I guess some Washington Square Mall. Mm -hmm. Took me down there to the Longdale, and then I got on the Riverside bus and came home. Okay. Where did that bus drop you off at? Drop out by the kangaroo gas station. Okay. Right there at Becky and the Riverside? Yes. What time do you think you got home? It was about, on that day it was about 11.30. About 11.30? 11.30 p.m. Okay, it's a pretty long bus ride. So no, we got to wait for the other buses and then we leave, they leave at 10.45. Okay. Uh, take everybody else. Okay, but now's the real important part. Alan, I want you to be honest and not skip any details. Tell me everything, okay? Don't leave anything out. Okay. okay? Go ahead. What do you want? When you got home. When I got home, I walked in and Mark was sitting on my kitchen table. He was eating a bucket of macaroni salad because I had hugged my mom at that time to tell her uh, that I loved her and I was home. And then after that, I sat down at the kitchen table. I was sitting there with my mom and we were sitting there talking. And then after a while, Mom said she had to go to bed. Who all was in the kitchen? It was me, Mark, Harley, Wade, the uh, foster kid. He was in there for about 10 minutes. Okay, let's back up again. So you stuff that out. I, I really want everything. Um, this is very important, okay? I want every little detail. You come in the house, you said your mom and Mark were in the kitchen. Yes. At that time, when you entered the door, who was in the kitchen? It was. Steve and my little brother, my mom, and Mark. Okay. And after I come in, sat down, 
Carly, he walked in and grabbed something. Where did he come from? The living room. Okay. He had walked in, and then he grabbed something. He started moving stuff around, like cleaning up a little bit. Then he grabbed his ID and walked back out. Grabbed his ID? It's Sunny D. It's Sunny, Sunny D. D. It's a drink. Oh, yeah. And then he walked out. Yeah. How long was he in the kitchen? About five, ten minutes. Okay. And then, and then what happened? Then after that, me and uh, we got to talking. Stephen was taking playing cards and throwing them really fast. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, after he got done doing that, me and Mark played a game of chess, which lasted about half an hour almost. And then after that, Mom said she was going to bed, and I was like right in the middle of our game. Okay. And then Mark, because his eyes were bad, he couldn't see the board very well because mm -hmm. of the lighting. And then he just surrendered, and then I shook his hand, and I started talking to him for a little bit. And after probably about 20 minutes of talking, he just said he was going to leave. He grabbed a container of instant coffee, filled up the filled up the thing with water, and then just was, was your mom there to witness this? No, she was in bed. Okay. Cause she told me about it. You sure she wasn't there when the container of coffee came out? No, well, she gave the container of coffee to him. I remember that. Okay, remember I told you I wanted specific details, okay? okay. That's something you left out. I don't want you to leave anything else out. As my mom was going to bed, she, Mark asked about coffee, and then she was digging around in the cabinet and grabbed an instant coffee container that had about uh, this much coffee left in it. Mm -hmm. And then she said, she said he could have it. Okay. And then after that, we talked for a little bit, and then he filled up the container, started around, drank some, said he was leaving. I shook his hand again and told him to see him around. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he got on his shoes and walked out the back door. Walked out the back door? Yes. Okay. Where was Harley at this time? He was in his room. He was in his room. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Because he, as I was walking to get up to the table, he went into his room for a little bit. Because usually when mom goes to bed, everybody else kind of follows and he goes to bed. Okay. Where was Stephen? He was already in bed asleep, I believe. Okay. And did he leave the kitchen? He left after or before me and Mark started planning of just. He left before that. Yes. Okay. So you're kind of all over the place. You know, you're not telling it step by step. I've got to pull you in on this stuff. I don't like doing that, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And then after that, after Mom went to bed, you know, instead of talking for a little bit, like I just said, then he filled up the instant coffee container, he said he was leaving, so I shook his hand and he walked, walked out there, put his shoes on, and walked out the back door. Okay. And that's the last I had seen him. Where was Andrea? Andrea, she was upstairs asleep. Where was Deidre? I don't know where Deidre was. And that's the last time you saw him? That's the last time I saw him, yes. So after he left, I went down to my room about 1 o'clock, and then I fell asleep. I drive that my rabbit and watched a little TV. Okay. At what time do you think he left? It was probably about 12.30. 12.30? So what did you do from 12.30 to 1 o'clock? We sat there and talked. Who? Me and Mark. All right, he left at 12.30, you said. You went to your bedroom at 1 o'clock? Yeah. Well, but he was going to leave at 12.30, and then we started talking again for like 15 minutes, and then he said he was leaving. About 12.45, 12.50, he walked out the back door, and I went down to my room. I sleep in the basement. What did you guys talk about? We talked about football pros and how bad the teams were doing, and how bad some of the teams were doing, and some of the teams were good, and that uh, the Colts had lost Peyton Manning and how good a quarterback he was, and his brother was trying to catch up to him. That was about it. Okay. And you went to bed. Mm -hmm. What's the next noise you hear? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing. Okay. Do you have uh, any kind of disabilities? Do I? Mm -hmm. I do have club foot. Okay. Any mental disabilities? Not mental, no. Okay. Do you make decent grades? Yes, I do. I okay. actually graduated as a junior. Okay, that's good. I'm going to tell you what, you got inconsistencies with some of the stories you're telling. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah, I have to. Okay. You want to be straight with me this time? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. About 9.45, we had to close at 9.30. I was cleaning up, and then Nyla, she, my store manager, I think you met her. She mm -hmm. was the lady who uh, was the blonde little lady. Uh, uh, lady. And then she said, I don't, you can go ahead and leave. Steve's going to be here. Steve's her husband. And 
she said she wanted me to uh, go catch my bus. So I walked out the back door of Licks. I walked across the mall, or across the mall parking lot to the back to the Dillage Wing. You wait for the buses, mm -hmm. and then I got on the Wandale bus. Uh, yeah, the Wandale bus. It took me all the way around uh, Walmart, and then we went back around to the mall on Lincoln, and we took down Green River, and then we turned into the Lawndale area. Then I got off the bus. I waited for every bus to get there except for uh, the Riverside bus. The Riverside bus is always the last one to get there. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I got on the bus. We left. We went down South Green River, turned on Riverside, and then I started letting people off. Some people got on. Then we got to my stop. I got off. I started walking home. I walked in, seen Mark sit at the kitchen table after I'd hugged my mom and told her that I loved her and told her that I was home. He was eating a bucket of macaroni salad and he was sitting there talking and talking to Steve and talking to mom. You know, having a good time. I sat down at the table at the opposite end. And then Steven, after he got done throwing those cards around or whatever, he left. We started playing, me and Mark started playing a game of chess. And then Harley walked in, grabbed some, started cleaning up a little bit because this is a new kitchen. Grabbed a Sunny D, went to the living room again. About 25, 30 minutes after he had left, we were still playing that game still. About half an hour it took, and Mark surrendered because he couldn't see the board anymore. Then after that, we started talking about football pros and how bad they're doing, how good some of the teams are doing, how Manning, well, they lost, the Colts have lost Manning, and how uh, Eli is starting to catch up to him. And Start, and he said he got had to leave. Crap. I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I've never dealt with this stuff before. Well, I'll tell you, you're dealing with something here that um, I think you're being a little withholding a little information. Yeah. Okay. I've never dealt with any of this stuff before. Okay. Well, you need to deal with it straight up, okay? Be honest. It's the best way to do this. Okay? Oh, that's true. Okay? Okay. And after... Or start, okay, before I started playing the game of chess, my mom said that she was going to bed. And she asked, Mark had asked her to go make more coffee, and she was rummaging around in the little cabinet. She said, here, you can have some instant coffee. Not that much left. And after we were starting to play the game some more, and then he surrendered. And he filled the instant coffee maker. I said, coffee. He started around. I started talking a little bit as soon as we got to the back door. I shook his hand again, told him goodbye, see him around. Uh, then he walked out the back screen door. I seen him put his shoes on. I watched him walk out the back door. Then I went down to my room, fed my rabbit, watched TV, and went to sleep. That's the last I'd seen. Harley. You said earlier, Harley. Harley's door shut. Mm -hmm. After he went to bed. You're leaving out some stuff, all right? I've been patient with you. It's time to tell it all. It's time to be honest. You understand we know more than what yeah. you think? Oh, I already know. Yeah. I have a feeling you guys already know mm -hmm. more than I think because you guys are detectives. What do you think we know? Well, I think you know what happened to Mark. Mm hmm And I think you know, you don't know necessarily what happened, not like all what happened, I know you guys know the exact time and dates he was there mm -hmm. and some of the stuff that he has done within the past week. That's about all I know. What do you mean some of the stuff that he's done in the past week? Well, from what he had told me in the interview that I had with him, that there was no possible way that he could have been there on the 16th because he had known where he was at. Mm -hmm. And that's about all I know. Well, let me jump in here. You told me in our interview, which is taped, mm -hmm. that Harley was wanting to try to play chess with Marcus, and that he was asking him to play chess. Mm -hmm. You never mentioned that once so far. You also told me after you went to bed that you heard Harley's door shut shortly after that as he was going to bed. Mm -hmm. You never said that. You said he walked out the back door, okay, 
and then right there as you're saying he walks out the back door that's where you're hesitating and that's where the lie starts because you want to know why because when you're remembering your bus ride you're remembering all this uh, mm -hmm. stuff man you're looking to the right which is drawn from memory as soon as you get to the back door you're looking left with your eyes and everything else you're lying I mean that's where you're starting to make up the story it's where you're fabricating it at okay an interesting comment you made a while ago I haven't dealt with this before well no you haven't dealt with this before because if you are then we got a real problem mm -hmm. so this is the deal William we know what happened we know who did it and we know that you're part of it I'm not part of it well, we know this now that's ridiculous okay and that's you're a part of it by withholding information that makes you oh, a big okay. part of it all oh, right okay I thought, I thought like I had done something physically to him I mean I don't harm my family at all we're not saying you did hurt your family, but we're saying that you're part of it because you know what's going on and you're not helping us out, okay? Here's the deal. You keep leaving Holly out of this whole equation right now. But I got earlier when we talked, you was all about, you know, Harley's doing this, Harley's doing that, Harley's doing that. Have you and Harley talked since the last time we just talked to you all just a few minutes ago or a few hours ago? Not really. Not really. What have you, what'd you talk about when you get to talk? Well, you didn't really talk about anything. I was hoping to find his phone because he had lost it. Well, there's a few things as far as uh, there was some property missing, obviously. Are we going to find anything in your bedroom, anywhere around your house? No. Bonds of Mark? Not that I know of, no. Did Harley and Mark into a physical confrontation? No. Not from what I know. They didn't. Not from what, what you're I saying. Know. Not from what you know. What about from what you've heard? I haven't really heard anything. I didn't hear any noises after I went to bed. I didn't hear anything. We're talking about if Harley told you anything after the fact. Oh, no. Did anybody? No. William, here's the deal. Like I told you earlier, you know, about people helping us out and people not. Mm -hmm. Man, you going you end up you gonna end up hemming yourself up in this. Okay, oh. by withholding information and everything else. Yeah. Now, if you're trying to cover up for somebody and if you're trying to keep something I'm secret, not trying to cover just up listen and hear me out. Okay. If you know something, if I don't care if it's Harley done something, I don't care if it's you know, Andrew, I don't care who it was, and you know about it, you know, and this ends up turning south then you know you can get in trouble for this, right? Yes. Okay. If you're wanting to come clean, right now is the time to come clean. And, I mean, with the detective Ant one sitting here talking to you, there's so many inconsistencies in your story right now mm -hmm. that I have a hard time believing anything you're saying. Honestly, I mean, I really do. Yeah. So yeah. why would I want to sit here and believe you when you're so inconsistent I'm changing the story yeah you're inconsistent you're leaving parts out you're changing the story I mean you're you're fabricating I mean I can tell by looking at your eyes you're fabricating parts of this up right when you get to the point he walked out the back door that's when you start fabricating everything else I believe happened that night like I told you earlier when, we, when I interviewed you earlier I said you know hey man I believe you you know I'll sit down and play chess I believe the coffee I believe everything else I do not believe after he walked out this back door, that was the end of everything. Okay? Something happened that night. We know what happened that night, and it happened around that residence. Someone in that residence is involved. You are involved now because... I'm withholding information. You're withholding information. Now, do you want to be involved in the crime? No, I don't. Then you need to start telling us what everything you know, because you're not telling us everything you know. Do you want me to start from... I want you to tell me what part you're leaving out what happened that night, what you heard, and everything. I don't care what you tell me as of right now. You understand that? Yes. Because the only thing you're going to do is if you tell me everything, is help yourself out. You're not helping us out no more. We already know everything now. Yeah. You didn't You didn't do this to me earlier. You didn't give me everything earlier. So we went. Like I told you, we started an investigation. We did everything ourselves. So, yeah. I mean, as far as you, you know, helping me out, you've not done it so far. The only way you're going to change my mind in this whole deal is if you tell me verbatim what's happened. Because as of right now, 
Man, your your eye contact, you got way too much eye contact. I mean, this is not normal. Okay? Yeah. You staring a hole right through, you know, Detective uh, Ventlin the whole time you've been talking to him? It's not normal. Right. Okay? You're standing there staring at me the whole time. That's not normal. Okay? We can pick up on your body language, all your deceptions and everything else. Mm -hmm. So, man, I'm telling you, if, you know, somebody threatened you, you know, not to tell us or whatever, man. Nobody's threatening me. Well, promise you, threatened you, coerced you, anything. Honestly, I don't know what I'm withholding. Well, I mean, honest. You agreed with us that you were withholding something. Yeah. But I don't know this what it is. Because I'm just trying to, I want this case to end because I'm trying to help you guys figure out what happened. You guys already know what happened. I understand that. I really do. And for you guys yeah. to believe that I'm withholding something. Well, you said that earlier, in an earlier statement, okay. you heard Harley's door shut after, your, after you went to bed. Mm -hmm. Is that true or not true? That's true, because after mom goes to bed, usually... Everybody else, because she tells everybody else to go to bed, you know, everyone retires to their rooms. I heard doors shut, and then after the chess game was when everybody else was already in their room. After that, it was just me and him in the kitchen. He filled up his instant coffee container, and then he just walked out the back door. We talked a little bit more, shook his hand, and then he went out after he put his shoes on. He went out the back. He went out the back. Mm-hmm. And then after he went out the back door, I don't know what happened because I had retired to my room. And after I hit my bed, I fell asleep. Where's Harley's door coming to this? Harley's door. Okay. But after Mom had told everyone to go to bed, I heard door shut. I seen Stephen going to his room and then I heard Andrea and Kara, they were walking upstairs. And then I heard Harley coming through the hallway, I heard his door shut. And then soon after that, about five, ten minutes, Mark surrendered in a game of chess. Shook his hand, we got up on the table. I walked around, I got something to drink, then I sat back down at the table. And then he sat back down. And then we start talking about the football pros. And soon after that, he got back up. He filled up the instant coffee container with water. And I shook his hand again. I saw him see him around. And he walked out the back door. And after he did that, I watched him leave and everything. After he did that, I walked down to the basement. I fed my rabbit. I went to bed. Still, you have not answered my question. You said in an earlier statement, you heard Harley's door shut after you went to bed. Is that true or not true? Harley's door shut after I went to bed. After you went to your room? No, it's not true. Not true? Okay, you told me that on an earlier recorded interview and we hit that fact. Then when I asked you that question just not even five minutes ago, you said yes, that's what happened. You ever go down the river camps? No. Never been there in your life? No. Never. Would you your sisters don't... go? What do you mean river camps? Down in Weinbach. Oh, no. I've never been down there. Never? No. Have your sisters been? Probably did, because she said she was going camping down by the river a couple times with her friends. Okay. Harley ever been down there? No. You're sure? I, from what I know about Harley, no. He hasn't told me anything about that. What about the mud on your shoes there? That's from doing yard work yesterday. I do not. Let me see the bottom of your shoe. Pull it off if you okay. What kind of yard work do you do? Um, I usually, these are my work shoes, so I wear them to work. And after I, sometimes after I get off work, my grandma's boyfriend goes to pick me up. I'm over there lawn, dust this line everywhere. And then yesterday I was in the landscaping, picking up um, weeds out of the landscaping and dirt was getting all over them. And we have a chicken coop out back, as you know. And I walk in there, I feed them, and they'll kick dirt up on my shoes and all that other stuff. So once you Harley went in his room, you're going to stick to that story that he never came out? From what I know, from what I remember, yeah. 
Yes, you never can. Do you feel like you're involved in something really big here? Well, yes, I do feel like I'm involved because according to what you guys are saying, I'm mean, changing the story a lot. I'm withholding information, but I don't know what the information is. I mean, I'm telling you everything that I know. It may be like a different way of telling it, a ton of different like uh, sequence, but I'm telling you all that I know. Okay. Has Mark ever rode in your van? Not that I know of. Like I said before, he does not trust motor vehicles or anything like that. Yeah, he usually walks. Has Mark ever been on the van? Not that I know of. Now if I go down the river camp, am I going to find that shoe print anywhere? Probably not. So I've never been down to the river camps any day in my life. Okay. What do you mean probably not? I'm not going to find that shoe print. Because there are shoe prints, there are shoes like this all over Evansville. It's not necessarily going to match up to mine. Well, I'm pretty sure yours is only pattern number 7,846,493 with a size 10 with a wavy sole pattern made by airspeed. I promise you, you will not find any footprints of mine down at the river camp. I promise you that. Well, well, well you probably not even promise me. Mate, I'm telling you, you... I know. It ain't working. Something's troubling you. More than you're telling us. I can see it. I get it off Something's your chest. Something's bothering you. Get it off your chest. So you guys are just interrogating me constantly. Yes. Honestly, it's getting on my nerves. Okay. Well, you don't. You need it. I have. I'm, I know. I'm not involved in this. Okay, Who is? So, Who's involved in it? Not that nobody I know of. Did Harley do something to him? No, not that I know of. Because after I went to bed, I went to sleep. I don't remember anything. I don't remember. It. After I go to bed, I just black out. I just wake up. Not like necessarily black out, but I just go to sleep. And when I'm really tired, I'm a heavy sleeper. Yeah. William. You said in an earlier statement also that you didn't think you could pass a polygraph. Do you think that's true? That you couldn't pass a polygraph? But as nervous as I get when I'm put on the spot. It doesn't matter. It accounts for that. It accounts for that. Polygraphs are good. They'll tell if you're lying or not. Okay? I don't know what you know about them, but they'll tell you. They'll tell us if you're lying. Do you think you could poly pass a polygraph on everything you told us? Yes about not knowing anything more about Marcus? Mm -hmm. You told us everything you know about Marcus. Everything that I know of from the same point. I'm, I'm, I'm already going to tell you. Because when you guys were talking to Mom alone, mm -hmm. okay, I was sitting in the living room and I heard you guys talking about a funeral. Mm -hmm. I already know he's dead. Okay. Okay. That's all I know from that part. I heard you guys talking about the funeral and the plans to be made for it and that he's in Madisonville. Okay. Anything from that about Mark? Mark, I do not know. I know that he has mental issues and he does not like riding in vehicles. How did he die? That's, I don't know. No idea? No. I also know that he was found in the river. How'd you know that? Because when I get an update on my phone, it says a man was found in the river. I looked at it. And it looked like it could have been him, but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. And then I you saw a picture of him. I didn't necessarily see in the picture, but I got the notification on my phone that it said, "I mean, I was found in the river." This is while I was at work, because mm -hmm. it went off, and I was on break. I looked at it, looked at the thing popped up, and then as soon as uh, I seen it pop up, I clicked it off because I was going back to work at that time. Okay. Did you know it was Marcus at that time? No, I did not know it was Marcus that it was found in the river. So I know he gone missing, and that I thought I honestly thought he was still alive at that point. How did you know he went missing already? Because Mom had told me the day that you got that text, that notification. Your mom told you he'd already been missing. No, this was the okay. He had come out before. He started coming at my job and asking me these questions. He'd come out, ask me questions about 
Marcus. I had told him that day I was heading into work. You remember that, right? Mm -hmm. That I was heading into work around. I'd be there at 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we left at well, we left about 11.15ish, okay. I believe. And uh, we left at 11.30. Took me to work. And I was there for a couple of hours, took a break. I said, pop up my phone, I clicked it off. It said, man, I'll sound a river. And the day I saw it, talk to you? Mm hmm. It popped up that day. And after that, I had gone back to work. Can you pop that up on your phone? I, I don't believe that I can because I tried looking for it earlier. Is I heard you guys talk about the funeral. Yeah. Okay. What popped up? I'll show you. I mean, the news no. organization or what? Or it's a friend? 14 WFYE. That, that's the one you would have come mm -hmm. up on? Okay. I can show you guys what I use. But no, I, I know about it, okay? I know about the 14. I think send the news alerts out. But yeah. You know what? That, that news alert would have come out either on Sunday or Monday. I talked to you uh, Wednesday. Okay? Yeah. The news alert wouldn't have come out then. It would have already happened. So you understand there's conflict here. Yeah, Real conflict. I really do understand. Because you're already you're already saying that there was Marcus in the High River. How you know he's in the High River? I never said nothing about it. I mean I just took a guess. I don't necessarily know. You said long ago, you knew. I said, said I knew that was Marcus. I said it could have possibly been. I didn't say I knew for a fact. Long ago when when Detective Valen asked you, is there anything else you know? You said, all I know is he was found in the Ohio River. That's all you said. That was your exact statement. I went off of this because I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that notification pop up on my phone. Man, you're going to end up hemming yourself up. Um, oh, my God. I fucking not involved in this anyway. Who was involved in it? Earlier you told you were. Don't. How was I involved in it? You said you were involved. Okay, I talked to him. Okay, okay, look, I'll start from the beginning. I'll give you exactly everything that I know. Is it going to be the same story we've already heard? Yes, possibly. Oh my God. Okay, look. I want to know what happened to Marcus. I think at one time you cared about him. All right, and you still care about him. All right, I need to find out what happened. To him. We need to know. We need to know how much you're involved in this. We need to know if you're the one that harmed him. I'm not the one that harmed him. Do you know who did? No, I don't. I think you're leaving something out. I don't know. I'm being serious. I'm telling the truth, man. I don't know who harmed him. After he left, I don't. Oh my God. <laughs> I honestly do not know who harmed him. I honestly don't. Who do you think would harm him? I don't know who would have. Anyone hit? in the house? Is Are that what you're asking? If anyone in the house would have harmed him? I, I, I left that open to you. No one brought up in the house. Is somebody in the house harming? <sighs> hmm? What about no. your dad? He wouldn't harm Mark. He wouldn't. Your mom? No. Nobody in the house would harm him. Nobody? Nobody. Harley? Nobody. Not even him. <sighs> Are you scared of Harley? No, I'm not. Pretty big fella. He is pretty strong. I know. But he's about my size and high about a couple more pounds and he can lift as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared of him. Are you afraid of what might happen to him? I care about him because he's my brother. You care what's going on? I mean, are you scared of going to jail? Me? Mm -hmm. I'm scared freaking shitless because I'm getting in your questions about something that I even have trouble remembering myself. Because from the story that I'm telling you guys, I've told you guys different stories. Sorry, we talked about jail before, too. 
He's been okay. He's been locked up in DOC and stuff like that because he's a priority three foster kid. Mm -hmm. He's the high. He's the highest. Yeah, we don't threat. Yeah. And he's always talked to me about being there and being in other blog up facilities, but he doesn't talk about harming Mark in any way. He doesn't even talk about Mark. Did he talk about harming anybody? No. Well, no, he said there no earlier. He brags about fighting and everything else. Well, from what I know, he's not going to harm anybody around my house. Okay. He talks about fighting and brags about it, correct? Yes, he does. Okay. Does he ever brag about choking anybody, punching anybody, kicking anybody no. specifically? Just fighting itself. Okay. What does he brag about? What about fighting? He just loves to fight. He doesn't necessarily say anything about like what he loves. He just loves to avoid pain on people. He likes to inflict pain on people. From fighting, yes. Does he have any kind of resource, any kind of money? Does he work? No. Well, do you see him buying anything? Mm-hmm. No. What about you? Have you bought anything pretty expensive in the last couple of weeks? Have I? Mm -hmm. I paid my phone bill. Last okay. couple of weeks? You know, I, the, most, the most expensive thing that I've bought in these past couple of weeks is my cell phone case for about $32. How much is your phone bill? 75 If I If I don't go over. Okay. Here's the deal. You say you like Marcus, right? Yes. He's a family member, basically. Yes. All right. Family. How long you know known Harley? How long have I known Harley? A couple weeks. A couple weeks. Yeah. You get to know a person pretty well in a couple weeks? No. You're right. You don't. Okay. Now you got to decide who you're going to help here, okay? I want to help and, Marcus. Okay. If there's something you know, you need to tell us right now. I don't know anything else. You just told us that Harley likes to fight, but Harley wouldn't hurt him. He wouldn't hurt him. Harley only fights people if they pose a threat to him. If they get into his face, he only fights people they get in his face. All right, I'm going to tell you, we don't go after people that are innocent, okay? We may for a while, but we get on the right track, and then we go after the guilty people. You understand yeah. that? The last thing I want to do is throw somebody in jail that's innocent. Yeah. All right? You understand me? Yes. I don't want to do that. That would go against all my beliefs. But I need to know what happened and what you really believe about Harley because I don't think you're being honest about Harley. You're really not. You know he's capable and he's probably got the attitude to hurt somebody. He does have the attitude to hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen, yes, he does. Okay. He gets mad really easy. I've seen that too. Okay. And he was agitating Marcus that night, wasn't he? Not that I can recall, no. He said that in a statement. What was the exact quote? How was I... He was, uh, he was trying to, I believe, trying to get Marcus to play he was chess. Okay. He was aggravating him. Or he was aggravating okay. to play Marcus in chess, but they was playing at the time, and by the time the game got over, Harley and Jim went to the living room. And shortly after that, I went to sleep, and shortly after I went to sleep that I heard uh, uh, Harley's door shut. I believe it was pretty well the statement that you gave earlier. I can rewind the tape and show you for sure. But Harley ever get out and drive the van? No, he's not supposed to. Uh, listen, covering for him just makes it more difficult. I, I understand that. Okay. I really do. But I don't, I, I don't foresee him doing any of that stuff. He wants to make it a house. He wants to make his life good. Okay. One of those two different things. I'm not going to tell anybody anything, what you're going to tell me next, okay? But I want you to be honest with me. Debbie's not going to find out. Ron's not going to find out. Nobody's going to find out. Okay. I want to know what Harley's done wrong in that house. Harley has... Him and my big sister, mm -hmm. they clash because they have bad attitudes at times. Mm -hmm. They clash at times and he gets mad and he'll just leave the room. Go, he'll go, no, he'll go leave the room and go to his room, cool off about 15 minutes and he'll come back and he's happy go lucky. Mm -hmm. That's how he is. So he's never done anything wrong in that home. The guy that has a troubled past like him, been in so much trouble, he's an angel in your house. I don't believe that for a second. I think you're still covering for him and I'm getting f fed up with it. You need to tell me what he did wrong. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to squeal him out. I want to know what he's done wrong in that home. All right? The only thing he's done wrong is get smart with my sister constantly. That's it. Yes. That's it. He does all his chores. He does all his chores. He doesn't smoke cigarettes. He weed. doesn't smoke. He may smoke weed, but I'm not for sure. All right. Let's, let's expand on that. 
how might he smoke weed? How might you suspect he, that? He comes he, when he first came here. He he has said he smokes weed. He has said he would love to do it again. And he said if he knew somebody, he would go get some right now. Okay. And you know what I'm going to do about that? Nothing. I don't care. You understand? Yeah. I don't care. What else has he done wrong in that home? He's not an angel. I know he's not. An I angel. know he's not. He's got a trouble pass. I know mm -hmm. that he's been in lockup. He's been in right. lockup since he was like ten. Mm hmm. Okay. But other than that, we start with my sister and talking about smoking weed, obtaining it, and doing all this other stuff with weed. I don't know. You don't know. I do not know. He's not done anything else wrong. He's not snuck not out at night. Not from what I know. At all. Why do you, you have to suspect? Why do you have to bite your lip when you talk? My lips are dry. I'm talking. No, you had to bite your lip to give that statement just now. You're qualifying your answers. It, it, it's it's not working for me, okay? He's done some stuff wrong in there, I know. I know he's done some stuff wrong. What else has he done wrong? I don't, I don't what, about, what about him and Andrew? Tell me about that. Him and Andrew get along really well. How well? I mean, everyone, he, they do hold each other's hands and all this, but they're not allowed to date or do anything like that. They're of age where they're going to be thinking about um, other exploits. No, no. What do you know? I know that everything about Ariel once they're going to find ways to get around. Have they found other ways that you suspect? Not from what I suspect, no. Really? The hold hands and from holding hands? Together. I mean, he'll walk up to her in the back and hug her, put, her, put his head on her shoulder, and every once in a while I'll see him hold each other's hands. That's about it. That's it. Mm -hmm. So get your blinders on from then on everything else. That's what you're saying? I don't believe that. I think you see what goes on there. I know you see what goes on there. And he's done some things probably shouldn't. They may not be illegal, but he shouldn't be doing them. Am I right? Yes. What are they? Like what he's okay. done in the house. Pardon? Like what he's done in the house. Yeah. He okay. He gets mad, and when when he gets mad, when he gets when he was, him and my big sister Dieter get into it. You told me that. Okay. And he just keeps going and going and going and going until he finally walks off. Okay. And after he walks off, he cools down. And then he comes and back. He I know you told me this. Sorry. Yes. He's done more than that. A kid like him doesn't just stop. They keep doing stuff. All right? And they can't help herself. It may not be their fault. All right? It may be the way they were brought up. But somehow, he's a troubled child, and he's causing problems there, and I think you're still covering for him. I'm not covering for him. But what else has he done wrong? I know okay. you see some stuff. Not that I know of. He's never snuck out at night. Never okay. late. If he snuck out, I'm asleep. Okay, so you don't know. If he's done anything else, I'm asleep because I usually go to bed around 10 to 12 o'clock. Usually it's 10. Okay. How does it 10 o'clock when you work all the time? Till 10. That's only on the days I don't work. On the days I do work, I don't go to bed till about 11, 12. Earlier you told me, the, or other of you, I, th I got rear and rear on three times. What time was you home that night? You said 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Three times you told me that in a recorded interview in my car. Mm -hmm. That night you told me 10 o'clock. Now you're saying that you're not getting home until 11.30. That is an hour and a half difference. What if it's 11.30? When? Yeah. Well, go when you just find your bus ride across town when you went to Walmart and that was got another bus. Thursday. And you're going off when I told you about Saturday. No. You told me the night that Marcus was there. We said the night Marcus was there. What time did you get home? You said 10 o'clock. That's what you told me. You said 10 o'clock. You said, and you said 11.45 is when he started walking out the back door. Okay, you didn't get home until 11.30. That's exactly what you said. You said around 11.45. Then you changed the ball go to 12.30. Then you change it to 12.45. Then you change it, well, no, it was at midnight one time. And then you go to bed, you said at 12.30. Then it turned into 1 that you went to bed. Then I believe it was almost 1.15 that you went to bed. You said about 10 different time frames within an hour, two hour time period. So you said. You don't have to look at me. I, mean, I wrote it down. I know. I believe you. Me? I know. I know. Do you have trouble telling the truth? When I'm put on the spot, yes. Okay, and you're put on the spot right now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm having a real tough time. 
so I want to believe you, but I just there's something there's something missing. There's something missing. I can tell. We can both tell. Well, we, we wouldn't have you down here for no reason. I know. I've, and I understand. I wouldn't have you. I wouldn't have interviewed you so long in the car. Yeah. You seen how long it took me to interview everybody else in the car? Yeah, it took me the longest. Yeah. It was almost like 45 minutes interview or something like that in the car. 35. I looked at the 35. Yeah. And, you know, well, you know, here, here's the deal. We can either help you or you're on your own. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Right now we're trying to help you. Now, you might not think that. You know, you might think we're here grilling you, you know, making you cry, making you do all this other stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't be giving you the second chance if we didn't want to okay i had enough from the interview earlier to get warrants on you and put you in jail okay yeah he was the last person seen yes i've got a you know something's happened to him you know but hey, if i'm if i'm the last person that seen him was i might make me a suspect enough to get a warrant to bring you in is what i'm saying i know i'm not necessarily saying i'm gonna charge I, you with i already something. know you guys think i'm a suspect because my hand's swollen and um fortifying the truth or when you when you did you figure this out did you guys keep asking about my hand at the tell sign when did you guys keep asking me about today my or hand? the last week what that i'm a suspect no about your hand you came in okay on the day that i worked you asked about my hand i know is that when you thought you were a suspect i thought i was a suspect after you took pictures of my hands okay suspect of what that i did something to mark mm -hmm. or helped in any way to possibly kill mark will kill now, but harm him in any way at that point. Mm -hmm. I thought, I even broke down and cried at work mm -hmm. because you guys came and took pictures of my hands. Mm -hmm. That's when it clicked. You guys think I'm a suspect to what has happened. Well, you know what? I, I really do after that statement because not one time have either one of us said anything about killing. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, really? No. Goodness, not one time. Seriously. You just brought that up on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna say he's found the high river. You're one now. You're saying he's killed. <coughs> oh my god! It's time for honesty. We're just <laughs> doing, all we're doing is an investigation. I know you guys are. We're doing an investigation we're concerning we're, Marcus. We're, we're looking out for Marcus right now. I know you guys are. I'm trying to help him too. If I did anything to harm him, I don't know. I honestly, don't. You're giving us a lot of information that uh, usually a completely innocent person wouldn't do. If you did anything to harm Marcus, you really don't know, is what you just said. <coughs> what kind of statement is that? Because after what you guys are saying, you think I did something to Marcus. That's what you just said. If I did anything to harm Marcus, I don't know. I did not I did not harm Marcus in any way possible. After no, he left, I went to sleep. <sighs> <laughs> My gosh. Oh, my God. I don't <laughs> I'm trying to help too but I'm trying to help for my safety now and you guys are just drilling me and drilling me it's for your safety I know it is pardon I said I know it is if I wasn't here right now I'd probably be in jail I realize that because you said you could have brought a warrant to bring me in and all this other stuff but I don't know what else happened after he left that's the thing. Why did you leave that night? Later that night? I did not leave later that night. You sure about that? I'm positive I didn't leave later that night. So I ain't gonna have you on camera at the store. Right through. Point right toward. Yep. Point right toward Riverside Drive. I'm not gonna have you on the camera driving down the road. Or riding in a vehicle down the road. Right? I did not ride in a vehicle. There's I'm no possible way. I'm not going to have you drive in a vehicle then. No. Or walking. No. Possibly walking, yes. But I thought, okay, that night, is either is that night or a couple nights after that, I had walked down to the Cambridge gas station and got a 12 pack of RC Cola. After you supposedly went to bed? I said either that night or a couple nights before or after. So, when I got you on camera down there, that would be the night 
after Marcus was there, you went to bed after Marcus was there, and then you left, and we got some Marcy Cola, maybe? Is that what you're saying? Yes. I'm going to be honest. I have t- terrible, terrible memory when it comes to time and date. You have a terrible lying problem is what you got. I know. Honestly. I'll you have a be- very terrible lying problem because you know what? You're lying about this right now because, you know, I just called you out on that, and you're the one that's sitting there saying that you left and went and got RC up the road. But that's not what you're telling me, okay? You're sitting there saying Marcus walked out the back door, I went to bed, then Harley's door shut, now Harley went to bed while you was playing chess, then you start, you know, I didn't go nowhere that night, I went straight to bed and I blacked out. But I don't really black out, but I'm a sound sleeper is what you said. But now you're saying, you okay. know what, I went down the road and got me a 12-pack RC and they came oh back to the house. God. I honestly do not know what I... If I did something, I do not know about it. Well, maybe you did something to him you don't know about it. You ever think about that? Yes. So you could have harmed Marcus and not know anything about it. Oh, my gosh. Is that what you're saying? Like you, could you have harmed Marcus on accident, playing around with him or something and hurt him? Could you have done that? Yes, I didn't play around with him. I played the game of chess, we talked, and we left. Could you have done that? Because you don't know anything you're doing right now, apparently. After 11 o'clock at night, could you have hurt Marcus on accident? Could you have hurt Marcus on accident? Answer the question. Could you have hurt Marcus on accident? After I went to bed? Oh, after you went to bed and we went and got our seeds, whenever. After I, okay, when I go to bed... I have, tr- I have time sleepwalking, but by the time I went to bed, he was down the street. I don't walk that fast. I have club foot. Could you have hurt Marcus on accident? Yes, I could have. But I know for a fact I didn't. William, if this was an accident, if something happened and it's an accident, okay, it's an accident. You understand that? Yes. Okay. If someone else did something and it was an accident... We can work with that. I told you that a while ago. Yes. If this is a stone cold, malicious act, we're going to work on it different. You understand that? Yes, I understand it. Okay. You're telling me right now you could have harmed Marcus and not known about it. Yes. I'm pretty sure if I harmed somebody, I'd know about it in any way, shape, or form. You understand that? Yes. Okay. You're telling me you don't know. What happened? There's something you're not telling me. There, I, there's a part I you're can't leaving out. Call it in my memory. Why can't you call what you did to him? I didn't do anything to him. You're telling me right now you could have. I could have. Yeah. Well, well, for a fact, I know, didn't. I ain't gonna sit here and make a statement to you that I could have done something if I know damn well and good I didn't do it. But you're telling me that you could have done it. was an accident we need to know. I don't remember anything after I fell asleep. That's the thing. Apparently you remember going against some RCs. I went to twelve pack RCs. Okay. It was either that night or a couple nights after that. I got home from work. I was working the weekend shifts, you know. See, you know that your attitude changes? Oh my god. <coughs> oh, I'm what about the attitude change at the home the last few weeks? What do you mean attitude change? I talked to everybody there at the house. They said you've had an attitude change the last about three weeks. Or the last few weeks is what I've told. You've had a bad attitude. So I'm about constantly the, tired. About the rabbit cage earlier today, you know, where you crushed like a $200 rabbit cage and threw that back. I took it apart. Yeah. I didn't. No, I put that out because my buddy wakes up in the middle of the night. And the fact that we're moving to the new house on Lincoln... Where we, where we plan on moving to, my room's small. I can't have a big giant cage. So I took it apart. I set it outside for someone to take. So much easier it is to talk about something like this that you actually really did and you know than yeah. the other stuff that you're trying to fabricate. It's a lot easier to talk about that, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. But then when I go back to something else, then that's when you get all hemmed up and start crying and get all emotional. Remember earlier when I asked you about the DNA, if I could find any of your DNA on Mark? Yes. What was your answer? I don't remember. I'll be honest. 
Okay, let me re-ask you the question. If I go and take Mark and I, you know, lift all the DNA off of him, all over his body, clothes, everything else, where could I find your DNA at on Mark? On his hand, in the back of his shirt, because I patted him on the back of his shirt and I shook his hand up through the chest match. Am I going to find it anywhere else? No. Are you positive about that? Yes, I'm positive. I'm not going to find your fingerprints anywhere? No. You realize that stuff stays on there for a long time, right? I realize it does, yes. Okay. Each person has their own set of fingerprints. Mm -hmm. I realize that too. And I'm going to tell you, honestly what I believe, so I did it. Something's happened and it was an accident, okay? I'm not going to sit here and say you did it. I'm going to say an accident happened and then everybody freaked out and then nobody knew what to do, okay? And about three of you trying to cover up for each other. This is the deal. If one of the first one that cracks is going to be the lucky duck. The second one that cracks might be all right. The third one ain't, definitely ain't going to be all right. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to talk about going to jail and everything else, wait till you're number three. Then you're going to see a lot of jail time. Number one might, might be lucky. Right now, you're not number one. Something's happened to him. I, I know something's happened to him. You know something about it. I and you, you need to tell us because I'm telling you right now, William, is right now you're 18 years old. You got your whole life ahead of you. If something is screwed up, someone screwed up, you know about it, you've done something, or might have done something, but you really don't know. Which I ain't believing that by no means, by the way. If you've done something or know about it, man, I'm telling you, you want to be the you want to be the first person to come forward. Because right now, what we're gonna do? We already had your mom down here earlier talking to her. You know that, okay? Right now, she's gonna help us the most. You can be there too. We're down there talking to Dieter right now. I'm sure she's going to help us. You're help, not helping us at all. And we're going to interview everybody in the house. We're going to interview the whole family. We're going to interview everybody on the block. We're going to interview the people at the kangaroo store. We're going to review everything. We're going to go down there and we're going to pull all the videos and everything else and see if you and Marcus were down there at the kangaroo store. I didn't go anywhere with him that night. Well, if Marcus was down there at the kangaroo store, then you walked in right there after him. And they'd say you went together. I oh, didn't go anywhere to that. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to keep my emotions under control. Like crying. So with that. Man, if you need a cry light off your chest, go ahead. I mean, if that makes you feel better, go ahead. It doesn't. Because I'm getting interrogated for something I didn't do. Well, so far you've sat here and told a bunch of lies on what you've done. That's what you're getting interrogated about, it's all your lies and inconsistencies. Which you've agreed, you're a bad liar and you have a lot of inconsistencies, correct? Mm -hmm. That's why you're getting questioned and grilled about it. Okay? We're grilling about all your inconsistencies. You're the one that cannot come up with a solution for that. Okay? Earlier when I told you, when your mom finds out you've been lying, she's going to grill you until you admit it. Mm -hmm. And then you finally admit it and get it off your chest and you feel better. Mm -hmm. Then you might get a spanking. Okay? That's kind of the same philosophy here. Okay? You're lying. You're, you know, er, er, you're lying about something. That's why we keep grilling you about it, to get it off your chest, to make you feel better, help our investigation. You know, we'll deal with whatever later. But right now we're dealing with this. And... What we're dealing with is you lying, your inconsistent stories. And there's only one way to solve it. I mean, me tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Yeah, pretty well. Do you want me to start from the beginning? Man, I've already heard this story like 15, two times about you playing chess. Okay? What I want to know is what happened supposedly when Marcus walked out the back door, which I've been told he left out the front door. I told you to let out the front door. I said, I've been told that. I'm not going to tell you who I heard that from. I've been told that. He let out the back. 
because when he walked out to, to the garage, he put on his shoes and he walked out the do side door right here and walked out that way. I seen him walk out the back door. Then I went downstairs to my room. You seen him walk out the back door or did you I walk into the back door? We were talking, okay, you're we talking about seeing, okay, I was talking about seeing him around again. Mm -hmm. Like, if he were to come, because he said he was walking from the east side to the west side, like mm -hmm. he usually does. And I told him that I would see him when he comes back around to the side of the city. Then he got on, walked out the back door, put on his shoes, walked out the garage door, and then left. So when did you shake his hand? I shook his hand after the chess game, and after he left, because I shook it one more time. After he left? Or before he left. When did you pay him on the back? When I walked in the door. When you walked in the door? When I walked in the door to uh, see my mom after I got home from work. So you didn't shake his hand then, you just patted him on the back? Patted him on the back after I walked in, gave him a hug. You told me earlier you shook his hand and patted him on the back at the same time. Your statement earlier was, I always did that to people. I shake their hand and pat them on the back at the same time. I didn't say I always did it at the same time. I said I always walk in, and when I see somebody I recognize, I pat them on the back. And shake their hand. I pat them on the back like this, and then after that I shake their hand. It's a formal greeting. Okay. Earlier, I'd have to review the tape, but earlier I'm pretty sure that you said, I shake your hand and pat them on the back at the same time. You kind of did a little motion like that while you was in the car. Because remember, I was like, well, how do you do that? You know what I mean? Because you know, I asked you, did you hug him or whatever? And he was like, oh, I'll spam him on the back. Which I've done wrong with that. I mean, you know, you got to do it all the time to guys. Yeah. I mean, I did it to my buddies. Yeah. So, but. You're just trying to figure out what happened from the chess game to when he left, pretty much. No, from when, when he you're left, saying that out what he walked out the back door. I know that. But you're trying to figure out what happened to him. But when he left, I had gone down to my room. I had fed my rabbit, and then I went to sleep. I'm telling the truth now, because I just now caught that I was lying when you said, reset what I had said or get the RC. So the day after that, that night, I took me and Harley went down to the gas station, got a pack of RC, came home. I split it 50-50, six cans each. With him, me, and went downstairs. And then I went to bed. The next night. The next night. Harley wasn't there the next night. He was at his mom's on Friday. He wasn't there all day. His statement was he was at his mom's all day Friday. Visitations only last for a couple hours. He wasn't there all day. Man, I'm telling you. When we get to the bottom of this, we will. Wow. Wherever it settles, it settles, okay? People that help us the most, in turn, help uh, themselves. I'm they really do. They help themselves. It's something you really got to think about. I am trying to help myself. I really am. I'm trying to help myself from not going to jail. But from what you guys tell me, I'm probably going to be the one that's going to get the most. When we leave this room, if we're still at this standstill, that's always a possibility. Mm -hmm. You want some time to think about it? We're going to step out. You sit in here. We'll be back in about five minutes. Talk to you. You need to do some real heavy thinking real quick. Get some soul searching. Some real heavy thinking. Two grounds. You need to help Mark. Help yourself. You know what I mean? A little balance matters in this besides you and Mark right now. You gotta look out for yourself. You gotta help Mark. But I'm trying to no, help Mark. But we're, we're done. You wait five minutes, we'll be back, okay? Okay. You really need to.